All right, guys, so the last couple videos, y'all seen a trend of me throwing kind of the same exact baits. Y'all seen me throwing the Untamed Tackle H Jig a ton, so I'm not gonna go back through all that, but that's been one of the baits I've been throwing recently, and then I've been throwing a buzz bait a good bit, and then a spinner bait a good bit, which I know if y'all watched the channel for a long time, y'all have never seen me really throw a spinner bait, and for good reason, there's a very small window where I feel like it's the best bait. And that happens to be in the fall a lot of times. The reason for that is the fish suspend down three to five foot around some of this cover, and the spinner bait's kind of versatile. You can fish it down three to five foot, or you can burn it real fast through schooling fish. So it is a bait that I keep on the front deck. Anytime we get into this like late fall kind of time of year, spinner bait is something I actually do throw a very small percentage of the time, but they do bite it really, really good around this time of the year. So I'm gonna take y'all kind of through these two setups. I've got a ton of questions on the buzz bait and the spinner bait that I've been throwing. So I'm gonna show y'all exactly what I do. But first I'm gonna get y'all to take a look at my spinner bait and buzz bait box. This is insane. This is literally how my spinner bait and buzz bait box looked when I just pulled out of the truck. I didn't even have it in the boat because I don't throw these very often at all. I've got literally one Lost River Lure spinner bait that's white with half nickel, half gold blades. That's a half ouncer. And I've got one little turtleback bluegill it's a spinner bait that I bought for fishing down in Florida because it looks like a bluegill with gold blade. So pretty dang bare. Almost nothing. A couple of buzz baits. That's a dirty jigs. We're coming up with an untamed tackle one very, very soon, but this is a dirty jig Scott Canterbury Pro Buzz. Here's one with a customized blade. And then here's one that I don't know, I just stole everything off of. So what actually happened with this one was I had a really good blade on it and a, and a custom blade and a custom rivet. And what I did I actually broke the hook off in practice so I could shake fish off. And then when the tournament came around, I took the blade and the rivet off of this one and put it on a brand new one that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show in this video, but I've got it in the truck. It's a custom one with a custom blade and custom rivet that I actually threw on Lake Fork in the tournament a little bit. But that's what happened with this one. This is, a, this is my practice buzz bait. I just throw a blade up on there, slide a toad or a soft plastic over it, and I throw that sucker down the bank. So that's my practice buzz bait right there. It looks kind of janky, but that's how it is. Okay, so. This is the exact spinner bait. This is a brand new one that I've been throwing in this in this latest video. It's simple. It's white. It's got a really good hook in it. That's what I like about this this spinner bait. Has a really really good hook in it. It's got a pretty. It's got a bigger hook than some spinner baits. It's got a really big barb on it, which is really important. I'm throwing this on 20 pound line a lot of the times, so I, I, I want to have a relatively big barb. It's not like a crankbait where you can get away with throwing something with a small barb because there's a lot of hooks and you're using light line. I'm using big line, uh, you know, a seven foot three medium heavy rod. So I want to have a big barb on the hook and that's really important for me throwing the spinnerbait around. Now, that's just pretty much when I'm throwing a spinnerbait, this is what I'm throwing. Now, every once in a while, got this one out of the truck. This is just a kind of an example, but pre-spawn, February, March, you know, anytime, anytime the water is actually a little more stained and I want that bait to go a little bit slower, I'll throw this type of a blade. This is like a small Colorado blade. I usually throw one bigger than this. This is actually not a spinner bait that I've ever thrown or probably I wouldn't throw this one most likely, but this does have that big blade on it. Just to show you an example, this blade's big and slows it down a lot and it gives it a more consistent thump. Like that blade spins slower and it gives it a slower thunk coming through the water. Whereas these willow blades spin very quickly. There's two blades, it gives it a very fast, very, you know, like it's a very high pitch kind of thump coming through the water. Where the other one's a lower, deeper thump coming through the water. So this one right here, you can get it a lot deeper. And in my opinion, it looks just like a school of bait fish coming through the water. And you can slow roll it around some of these isolated places that you're trying to catch these fish. So I'm gonna show you all the exact spinner bait that I've been throwing. I've had this thing tied on ever since Lake Fork and I haven't changed anything yet. So this without, you know, blazing past this too fast. This is the seven foot three medium heavy fast point blank rod. This is the one that I built specifically for reaction baits. You can see right here, this hook keeper that I put on it. I put that bait, that hook keeper on all my reaction bait reels. I mean, on my, all my reaction bait rods as the, uh, Fuji SK2 reel seat. It's got the Fuji titanium guides on this one because it's one of the earliest ones I built. This rod is, I didn't build this rod perfectly, but I still fish with it all the time. Caught a ton of fish on it. Got a seven to one gear ratio reel. This is actually 15 pound. I just said I used 20 pound line, but this is actually 15 pound line that's on this reel specifically. But you know, that, that's just something I tied on to help me get this bait a little bit deeper around the standing timber on Lake Fork that I was fishing. So that's the rod reel, point blank 7.3, Fuji rod components, Fuji reel seat, Fuji cork, and then now, that's the line. 
Now there's the spinnerbait. This is the exact one I've been throwing for a long time. And the thing about this spinnerbait is, it's got this, it's got actually kind of a thinner wire than a lot of spinnerbaits on the market right now. And it's actually held up really well. But if I was gonna fish a tournament tomorrow, I would probably go to the new one because this wire has caught, I don't know how many fish, 20 fish on it or something like that. So this, this wire has been through it recently. So I would change to another spinnerbait. That's the thing about whenever you're using spinnerbaits, if you go to a lighter wire spinnerbait, you're gonna have to change spinnerbaits. If you get on a bite where, you know, you're catching 20, 30, 40 fish a day, which can happen in the fall, even though it's extremely rare, you'll have to go through two or three spinnerbaits in a day because the wire is so you know thin that I'm throwing on this one, you'll actually bend them out and completely destroy the spinnerbait. Now, this one right here has a thicker wire, and you can see whenever I'm holding them up side by side, it has a thicker wire on it. This spinnerbait right here will probably last you you know, through a hundred fish. It'll, it'll absolutely catch them and catch them and catch them and catch them. This one will not, this one will break at some point. So you have to always be using new ones, but that's just kind of the, you know, the, what you're giving up to have a little more vibration with that thinner wire spinnerbait. So you can see, you can see whenever I've got this little three inch swim bait on back, that hook really sticks up a lot. It's got a really big gap to it, big barb, like I said on the other one. And that's the trailer that I'm throwing. It's just a three ounce. This is actually like a, uh, just a regular style swim bait trailer three inch, I cut it down a little bit, got to where it sticks just past the skirt. I want it to be kind of a smaller profile because the bait's really small this, this time of year. So you can see the, blade, the blades are relatively small and then I've got kind of a smaller profile bait. So that's the one that I'm throwing right now all the time. Caught spotted bass on this thing. I caught a three pound largemouth on it and then I've caught, well on Lake Fork I caught something bigger than that in practice. But I caught a three pound largemouth over here and then all the way down to like some 10 inch spots. So everything will bite this thing, you can catch a bunch of fish on it and cover a ton of water. That's the best part about that is like I said earlier, you can fish it from, you know, slow rolling it down eight or 10 feet deep if you want to go super slow or you can burn it right underneath the surface around school and fish and catch them all over the place. So now this is what I'd much rather be throwing. Let's just be honest. Topwater bait, braided line, heavier rod. This is the exact buzz bait that I've been throwing a lot recently. Now, I know y'all want to see that one that I was fishing on the Mississippi River with because everybody was like, what's that custom setup? What are you doing with that? I can't show y'all that one. I'm sorry, I just cannot. But this is just a standard, you know, dirty jigs buzz bait right here with a with a white horny toad on back. And it's got 50 pound, this is actually 60 pound K9 eight strand. It's about the castability of most brands, 50 pound, but this is actually 60 pound nine strand. It's got an 8.2 to one gear ratio reel. This is a seven foot three heavy point blank um, rod, all the same Fuji reel seat. This, is, this has, does not have titanium guides because this is gonna be my braid rod. So, I, well, th no, this one actually does have titanium guides. Now look at it. This is, this rod does have titanium Fuji guides and my point blank seven foot three. Love throwing this thing. This thing will absolutely launch this buzz bait around. And that's one of the things, this, this rod loads, it's an extra fast rod, but it loads actually really, really well. So when I'm skipping this thing under laydowns, under docks, you know, wherever I'm trying to place this bait, I can really load this rod up and it lets that lets it really skip and skip that buzz bait really far back up underneath there. Then whenever you set the hook on this thing, you have to remember, now I'm using a 7.3 Heavy and I'm using braided line, you cannot set the hook almost at all because you will bend this hook out. So whenever a fish blows up on it, you really just want to lean into him and start reeling very fast, get his head up and pretty much ski him to the boat. So had no problems with this, haven't lost or, or missed any fish on it and you know very much at all. So that's my two setups y'all been asking me all the questions about. If y'all like the video, leave a like, leave me a comment, let me know what kind of video y'all wanna see coming up in the future. I've got some off time now, as most of y'all know, we're not gonna start back up fishing until like next February or something like that. So let me know what y'all wanna see in the off season. Y'all know I'll stay fishing. We'll see y'all in the next one.